It becomes apparent this time of year there are two types of people, those who live for the holidays and those who could live without them. Polar opposites like Cindy Lou Who and the Grinch. Either way, tis the season. Our centerpiece this week looks at a guilty pleasure, syrupy sweet with no calories. Hallmark Christmas movies offer a satisfying conclusion. A Naples woman knows she wrote one. So it's a story about a lady whose job it is to find the Rockefeller Center tree. Her name is Miss Christmas is what she's dubbed, and she's obsessed with the perfect tree. Then it's on to another holiday favorite, the Christmas card. In a crowded field of family photos, a homemade greeting stands out. I like giving them to people and that their reactions, like my sister says, oh, this goes on the good table. And feel like tying one on, an expert will have you seeing green with a fresh look at the holiday wreath. We'll have those stories along with the latest in our Positively Healthy Medical series. I'm Amy Osher and this is Behind the Headlines. I'm Amy Osher, thanks for joining us. You know the holidays are officially here when Hallmark Christmas movies hit the airwaves. This year, the network rolled out a record 37 original features. The stories may be original, but the storylines are not unique. A Naples author mastered the formula and is now part of Hallmark history. There is a place where Christmas isn't one special day. It's a season starting in October. That's when Hallmark pushes play on its binge-worthy collection of merry movies. I started as a fan, kind of like everyone else. Gwendolyn Heasley should know. She wrote the book, one of the books that was turned into an Insta Christmas classic. But what's your credit on it? What does it say? It when says, does it come up? They say it's the novel by Gigi Garrett, because that's my writing name. Her story is aptly titled Miss Christmas. So it's a story about a lady whose job it is to find the Rockefeller Center tree. Her name is Miss Christmas, is what she's dubbed, and she's obsessed with the perfect tree. Turns out, over-the-top, type-A, Christmas-loving characters figure into a lot of Hallmark storylines. In this tale, the tree lot is the backdrop to, you guessed it, love. She kind of lets her rest of her life go by the wayside. She doesn't have a boyfriend. She doesn't have a social life. And so she gets a letter about this perfect tree, and she goes to find it. And then she also ends up meeting the perfect guy. It was the tree angle that got Gwendolyn's creative juices flowing. My dad always would get the biggest tree our house could fit, you know, and he would spend the whole day on it. Like the angels would go on top, and then we'd have like dancing ladies, the Santas would go in a certain section. Rooted in childhood memories, her soft spot for the perfect Christmas tree led her to exploring the real life search for the Rockefeller tree. It's an exhaustive nationwide year long excursion, traveling by land and air to find a tree that's tall enough, wide enough, dense enough, and so on. Another way that they get the tree is that people write in letters and they say, I have the tree. Okay, normally nobody has the tree. Normally the trees do not fit the qualifications at all. But I think twice in history, they've actually found the tree through write, someone writing a letter. So I wanted to kind of write a book about that for children initially, but then I thought, wait, this sounds more like a Hallmark story. The rest is history. She adapted her novel to the Hallmark formula. Yes, there is a formula. It always snows in a Hallmark movie, and you get the ugly Christmas sweaters, people are always drinking hot cocoa. There's usually always a scene with a Hallmark card. There's always usually a Christmas tree decorating scene. So it's like kind of having a full Christmas experience in 90 minutes. Watching a Hallmark Christmas flick could be described as transformative. At its heart, a Christmas miracle. Somebody's changed by Christmas, right? And we all kind of want to be changed by Christmas. You know, we start out the Christmas season being like, okay, you know, there's that hope and anticipation, you know, that maybe by the end of the Christmas season we'll be a better person. It's everything people love about Christmas mashed into one sweet sugary session. And once you're hooked, it's hard to stop. So I'm hoping to maybe do, like fingers crossed, a sequel to Miss Christmas. And at the very end of the movie and in the novel, they decide to buy a Christmas tree farm. 
If you thought addressing, stamping, and mailing holiday cards was exhausting, think again. The crafty among us derive their holly jollies from making merry masterpieces. And this one is like a, a window card. It's kind of like a magic window card. When you open it up, it's like a gives you an ornament picture. Spreading cheer is always in the cards for Debbie Patterson. I like giving them to people and that their reactions, like my sister says, oh, this goes on the good table. Debbie never sends a greeting she didn't make herself. This is a lot of sponging painting, flicking water on it, and um, then you get this appearance by uh, heating up some embossing powder to where it kind of melts away. For the crafty among us, there's no rest during the holidays. The ideas are just popping all the time. So every t I wake up in the morning, I'm thinking of a card. I gotta run out here and do it, make the card. At least an hour goes into making each custom card. It requires a lot of glue and uh, heat to make the glue puff up like that. And it's time well spent, Debbie believes. Busy as an elf in a Wonderland workshop. So this card I made uh, this morning, and it is um, a cutout. Those are die cut uh, light post. She and her card stamping friends add color to the season. So in my world, we all send cards and we send cards to people who may not want the cards. And may, we know that some people will just toss them and, and you know, yeah, they do. But that's okay, we're making the cards and we've got more ideals, we'll make more cards. Taking stock of their blessings, Debbie is spearheading a drive to collect and deliver cards to a local nursing home. So these are some of the cards for my card drive. And it's basically some very pretty designer series paper. And I use a die and cut out the word Mary from some paper and then put that right on, on here. Christmas card making is almost a year-round endeavor. For the truly devoted, there's little time for decking the halls. No, because, you know, I really am thinking about cards. And, and I set my cards around, so in a way, they're my decorations. The only wreaths, reindeer, and snowflakes you'll find are on paper. Most will be tucked carefully into envelopes and given away. So it's from my heart, and when I give a card to somebody, you know, it's my art, and I'm giving it to you. So to me, that's special. While others become overwhelmed during the holidays, not Debbie. She finds peace on earth, creating tidings of comfort and joy. I can stand here for hours listening to Elvis and make my cards. It might take a holiday miracle to turn out a wreath like this, but our Ashley Collins believes. She's now sharing a how-to from a Naples landscape expert, taking you from all thumbs to green thumb.
when we come back, tis the season for castles in the sand. Enjoy it while you can, the remains of a world-class sand sculpture. That story is coming up. Life here is amazing, and so is the joint care. At the Total Joint Center at Physicians Regional Healthcare System, we've changed the experience of joint replacement for good. With our comprehensive joint care program, most hip and knee replacement patients return home in just two days because we know you want to get on with your active life. Pain-free living starts at Physicians Regional Medical Center Collier Boulevard and Physicians Regional Medical Center Pine Ridge. My name is Steve Unser and cabinetry is my specialty. I have been creating custom designed cabinetry for 20 years in Southwest Florida. And now I'm celebrating the grand opening of our new Naples showroom. Steve Unser Cabinetry will help you design your kitchen, bath, or home office with stunning results. Offering the best quality of cabinets with a wide variety of design options and pricing to fit any budget. If your kitchen isn't becoming to you, you should be coming to us. Now two locations to serve you. Is your auto insurance keeping pace with your life? Ask for a AAA triple check insurance review to see if your current policy is still a good fit. An agent will assess changes in your life, like new vehicles or drivers. Make sure you've got the right coverage and all the discounts you deserve. They'll also see how a AAA membership can round out your protection on the road. Plus, provide roadside assistance, discounts, free services, and vacation extras. Ask for your AAA triple check today. Being up and active is certainly a good thing, but if you're not wearing the right shoes, your feet can take a beating. Hammer toes and bunions can get pretty aggravated during the holidays. Here's the latest in this week's Positively Healthy. On average, a healthy person should be walking about 10,000 steps a day. That adds up to a lot of miles over a lifetime. If you throw in ill-fitting shoes, it can lead to trouble underfoot. Women wearing towering heels often end up shouldering the pain. When you're in a stiletto, you're pushing all the weight to the front of your foot. If you have feet that are going to spread, they are going to be more likely to spread because you're putting all the weight on the front of your foot. Dr. Christina Kabosh is a board certified orthopedic surgeon with a specialty in the foot and ankle. As those feet spread, the toes can't stay straight because they're cramped into a usually a pointy small toed shoe box. So the toes are gonna come over, the feet are gonna be spreading, the toes are coming over and you're creating the perfect storm. One of the more common foot deviations is the bunion. A bunion is a deformity of the foot where the bones in the foot start to spread apart. As the bones in the foot and the arch of the foot start to spread apart, if the big toe stayed straight, you wouldn't fit into any shoe, so the big toe comes over. As the big toe comes over, that creates the bump on the inside of the forefoot, which can be very painful because it presses against shoes. Which is why pointy toes are problematic. Another common foot fault is a hammer toe, which is an abnormal bend in a middle joint of the toe, causing it to curl downward. Those smaller toe bones weren't made to bear the weight of your body, so they begin to get sore. Those joints can become inflamed and then you develop hammer toes. For dressy occasions, experts recommend a shoe with a wide toe box that are two inches or less. For taller heels, a platform under the toe box helps lower foot stress. If your feet are feeling the pressure. My first advice is to get out of the heels. All right, get the weight off the front of the foot. So you can move on with enjoying the holidays. It's over now, but we thought this deserved a sanding ovation. The best of the best head to Fort Myers Beach each year around this time, taking part in the annual American Sand Sculpting Competition. As you can see, the talent here is rock solid, despite their medium of choice being packed sand. This is the competition's 32nd year, and it comes as a good time for beach businesses, who are digging out from a summer season dealing with red tide. The 10-day event wrapped up last weekend, but these awesome sculptures will be here until time and tide take them away. With winter season approaching, things are heating up in our newsroom. Here's a look at what our reporters are covering on the beat. Thanks, Amy. 
Hi, I'm Shelby Reynolds. I'm the food writer at the Naples Daily News. It's a good time to be a foodie in Naples. The fall edition of Sizzle Southwest Florida's Restaurant Week is in full swing. For two weeks, restaurants from Marco Island to Cape Coral offer fixed price meals from special menus. Then $1 from each meal is donated to a scholarship for students interested in the resort hospitality program at FGCU. Find the complete list of 55 participating restaurants online at naplesnews.com. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Collins, features reporter here at the Naples Daily News. This past week I got a chance to work on another installment of the Healthy Bod series where we look at unique health and beauty treatments found in Southwest Florida. This past week I got a chance to go to the Salt Therapy Cave right here in Naples off Pine Ridge Road. And apparently the salt, according to the spa owners, uh, has uh, the ability to help symptoms, help to treat symptoms of uh, COPD and asthma and other respiratory illnesses. Uh, for more on the story and to check it out, visit NaplesNews.com. Hi, my name is Brittany Carloni and I'm a reporter with The Banner and the Naples Daily News. This week I wrote about the initial plans for a proposed commercial project in Coconut Point. Marketplace at Coconut Point is planned on about 10 acres off of US 41 and Sweetwater Ranch Boulevard, just west of the club at Rapallo. The project is planned to include two restaurants, retail, and a 30,000 square foot organic grocery store. Read more about plans for the project online at naplesnews.com. I'm Harriet Heithouse, arts and entertainment writer for the Naples Daily News and naplesnews.com. Internationally famous violinist Gil Shaham is coming here this week. And everyone thinks of him as an elegant player, but he's had other challenges, like the time he looked down and found a palmetto bug on his shoe. What do you do mid-performance? Read about his very interesting life in tomorrow's Naples Daily News and NaplesNews.com. And it wouldn't be Sunday if Brent Batten didn't get his say. How about a weekly commentary? Brent? Thanks, Amy. Have you ever been behind someone going along nicely when all of a sudden that person stops? Or how about when you try to go around them and they swerve into your lane unexpectedly? Sometimes they'll turn without notice. These people should lose their license to drive a cart. That's right, cart with a T. Now that shopping season is officially here, Everyone is in the stores pushing shopping carts around, regardless of their qualifications to operate one. Be it the supermarket, the department store, or the warehouse club, you'll find people with no skill, no regard for other drivers, no situational awareness. Some of the worst offenders are at the warehouse club. It's a much more sophisticated layout than the straight up and down aisles of the grocery store, like the difference between driving down a one-way street and navigating a Formula One racetrack. So, you encounter all kinds of hazards, like the person who stops to get a free food sample, then stands there in place while eating it. Hey, Emerald, other people want to get a free food sample too. Move along. Or the people who park their cart in the middle of the aisle while debating whether to buy that case of ketchup on the fifth rack up. Ma'am, it's going to take the guy 15 minutes to get here with a forklift to get that down for you. Could you move aside while you wait? Before you can drive a car, you have to take a course and pass a test. I propose a similar system for driving a cart. Store police would monitor traffic and watch out for violators. Excuse me, sir. I just saw you going slowly in the passing lane. Please show me your license and proof of insurance, and I'm going to have to ask you to step away from the cart. I'm Brent Batten. Be sure to read my column on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays in the Naples Daily News. Check me out on Facebook, and as always, thanks for watching. Still ahead, a winter wonderland minus the snow. It's no problem when you've got a mega light show. That's ahead on Behind the Headlines. The area's only 30 minutes or less ER service pledge means you'll find less waiting for the care you need. And because we're full service hospitals, a lot more care if you need it. Less waiting, faster care. Only at Physicians Regional Healthcare System.
Hiring the right moving company is important. Best Moving and Storage is a family-owned and operated business serving Southwest Florida for over 22 years. From our free in-home estimate until the last piece of furniture is in your new place or stored in our climate-controlled warehouse, we treat you like family. Best Moving and Storage is fully licensed and insured with all of our employees being certified drivers and packers. When it comes to protecting your treasured belongings, choose a company that's experienced and trustworthy. Call Best Moving and Storage today at 239-592-6565. My name is Steve Unser and cabinetry is my specialty. I have been creating custom designed cabinetry for 20 years in Southwest Florida. And now I am celebrating the grand opening of our new Naples showroom. Steve Unser Cabinetry will help you design your kitchen, bath, or home office with stunning results. Offering the best quality of cabinets with a wide variety of design options and pricing to fit any budget. If your kitchen isn't becoming to you, you should be coming to us. Now two locations to serve you. Jean LeBouf has been an anonymous food critic in Lee County for nearly 40 years. And now JLB is expanding into Collier County. Look for a new review every week. You'll never know where I'll turn up. Okay, so the millennials get a bad rap for a lot of things. Obsessive phone use for one. But now they're getting credit in some people's perspective for preserving a holiday tradition. Here's more from the USA Today. definitely seen an uptick in business, which has been really great. We've gotten some college students out and some younger kids with their apartments or what whatever, to come get a tree and make it an Instagram moment. Last year we had this family come out and they were all decked out in um, matching pajamas and they literally brought a bed. farms they're so important um, to keep the the tradition around for future generations I just really hope that um, not just Millennials but everybody um, gets out and buys a sustainable product Finally, we pulled this one out of our holiday archives. A Naples man is known for spreading holiday cheer by erecting a massive light display. Last year, it took on added meaning following Hurricane Irma. The future of the Yuletide Gardens was uncertain. It's our fifth year doing it here. We've done it for about seven or eight years total. It kind of started because my wife told me one year you can do colored lights because she always did white lights. And then I went crazy and started buying colored lights and then adding and adding. I'm like, I'm going to keep getting bigger and bigger. Christmas lights was always like a therapy for me. Putting lights up and decorating the house for my, like my mom and my sisters and stuff, it just it helped and made me happy. And so it's like, I want to do that for somebody else. And we started growing and we had a lot of encouragement from friends and family and every year we just we'd buy stuff on sale and keep adding and adding and I think more of it's it's it was like a challenge from some people because they're like oh you can't get much bigger I'm like yes I can just try me <laughs> you know I don't want to be that house you just drive by and oh look at the lights that looks nice no I want them to be like holy moly Christmas you know and slam on their brakes and get out and just the reactions I mean you just we've got little things like 
in throughout or throughout the yard where you just walk by and you're like, okay, reindeer, Santa Claus. Is that the lamp from Christmas Story? Yeah, go. Star Wars. I mean, that's that's my that's my real nerdy side, and actually, that would probably be my favorite section just because I went into it with like I don't care if anybody else doesn't like it, I like it. <laughs> Sentimental wise, I mean, I mean, I love my nativity scene. I got a really good deal when I found that, and yeah, like my buddy, he saw the snowman, and he's like, "Is that snowman missing its head?" He's like, "Wait, the penguin took his head off," and then I set up the other penguin. He's like, "Oh, dude, they're playing keep away." I'm like, "Yeah." So we got a little bit of Sesame Street. There's a couple characters from there. We've got the Frozen Castle with Elsa. A lot of Disney and Pixar stuff mixed around. And then, yeah, I can't even keep track of it all. <laughs> There's so much of it. Or last year we had added 26,000 lights from the year before that. I'll just keep adding until the power stops working. <laughs> with this year, it was a little different because of the storm. We didn't know if we were gonna be able to do it or not. You know, the property was pretty wrecked and my wife wouldn't let me say no. <laughs> She's like, no, 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 too many people look forward to it and they're gonna expect it and we need it more than anything this year. There's gonna be people out there that won't have the same Christmas. So if we can give them something to make it a little better, then we'll do it. I mean, we do it for everybody. We do it, it's our gift to the community, but uh, we wanted it to be where, you know, I mean, just you can come here, be happy, you know, enjoy the, the sights, the sounds and everything. And uh, there's a little bit of everything for everybody and everybody has a, a good time. So it's just, you cherish those moments and you enjoy them and you know, it just, you know you're making a difference. And I feel pretty happy when I'm out here, <laughs> so. According to Phillips' Facebook page, the Yuletide Gardens light display is now shining bright in a new location. It's still in Naples. The lights went on as usual on Thanksgiving night. That's a wrap for this week's show. You can always catch up on past editions by logging on to NaplesNews.com. On the homepage, scroll down to quick links and select behind the headlines. I'm Amy Osher. See you back here next week. I feel like you have to let the environment kind of dictate it. Super cute. It's so yeah. cute. Mm -hmm. No, ornaments I feel like are really special. A story about ornaments would be something else I would like to do in the future because I feel like so many ornaments do have history. Yeah. My husband's family, they give an ornament each year that, like Statue of Liberty if they went to New York. And so each one has like a memory, which I think is really special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do that too, but then I do it.